The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. It's Down to Business with Jack Miller. Forget what they teach you in school. This is real life. Not Wall Street, but Main Street. He and his guests will answer your questions and provide you with valuable information. Stay tuned and join in the conversation. Follow them on Facebook at Jack Miller Down to Business or on Twitter at HJackMiller1. Hey, hello everyone. Welcome. This is Jack Miller. I'm here with my main man, Todd Cohen. How you doing, Todd? I'm doing great, Jack. It's been too long. I know. How's the Jersey Shore? How are you? How's Jersey Shore? I mean, great. I, you know, I get out of the humidity for a little while and uh, time with family and friends, always, always a pleasure. We were, we were at the Jersey Shore last week. I think it was hotter in New Jersey. Then we're staying yeah, there was a heat wave. Up. It was brutal. We came up in, here. It, it probably, but there were, it's still was better it. weather. I, For some reason, there's a little, little lag, but the, the audience will have to put up with it. Todd, let's jump into it because I'm excited. We have a gentleman uh, who's going to be joining us in, in the next minute or two. One of my sons sent me an article he posted on, on I think it was on LinkedIn or one of the sites. And this guy is named Steve Lindstrom, and I think he bought something like 1,700 individual partial notes, sort of like crowdfunded deal. And he wrote this, I guess they call them white papers on them. And, and they were all small. I think they were like, my impression is, we're going to ask him, but they were all small. They were like 25, 50 bucks each for like, you know, I, I don't know, he invested like 20 grand or something. Uh, and he talked about how uh, his rate of return after a couple of years was about 5%. So it really caught my eye and it sort of fits into uh, part of a segment of my business and sort of uh, crowdfunding and a bunch of stuff we've done on the uh, before. So I have a ton of questions on them. So with that, Steve, are you with us? I am indeed. Thanks so much for having me. Thank yeah, you for well. joining us, Steve. So maybe give us a little, maybe start off by a little background. I may have screwed up the story a little bit, but maybe tell us sort of, uh, you, you're what, in the software business? Can you hear me? I think we're having a Looks little like he froze there. Yeah, I'm an investor based. Out. <laughs> Sorry about that. So uh, I'm an investor based out of San Francisco. Uh, and so nine to five, like most people in the Bay Area, uh, uh, I'm in the technology space, write code. And I've been doing it for, you know, probably close to 16 years, something like that. Um, but yeah, so your intro is totally right. I um, did some online crowdsourced investing um, from 2013 to 2016. And um, like you said, I wrote an article on LinkedIn sharing my experience and um, just for all the rate of return wasn't what I expected. Uh, it was a great experience, a lot about it. And uh, since then, I've kind of taken the concept of purchasing paper and I invest in real estate uh, in the form of purchasing notes that are backed by real estate. So, so it's been a great time. From, from unsecuritized investing to securitized investing, and I take it that was the crux of what you, you know, most people when they go to school, they, they pay money and, and get an education. You actually, even though your return wasn't what you expected, you, you did make some money to learn what you did, right? Yeah, so, definitely. I, I have a question for you. Before we get in, I, I definitely want to focus on that. And I've spent the past 30 years of my life dealing with debt and the financial markets of debt. So I want to get to that. But before, I'm just curious, as a software engineer, um, you know, it, it, obviously it, it's a hot, hot market. What made you want to get diversify and get into buying fractionalized notes or investing in something different than technology or the S and P or something like that? Sure. So actually, I was turned on to it. Um, a friend of mine had a friend that was working at this particular company. Um, he just kind of explained the concept of me uh, of the investment uh, and how you can kind of diversify across lots of different notes. Um, so if you don't put your eggs in one basket, the idea is your rate of return will be more secure. And um, I think in, in, it holds true. But, um, you know, overall, unfortunately, it didn't work out as well as it should. But the concept is still pretty good. But uh, as far as why I want to get into investing, um, like most Americans, I don't want to work for my entire life. So uh, I just in and would, you know, like to have some money to retire with. So I have a question, you know, what age, like, I don't know how old you are. You seem like a, a pretty young guy, but what age is your optimum, like, retirement age? 
Um, so when I say retirement too, I, I suppose it's kind of a, a loaded term. Um, I really enjoy working. And so for me, retirement is more being able to do the work that I want for myself. Um, so currently I'm 33 and, you know, I do the retirement age is as soon as, but, um, you know, I still really enjoy software and I plan on keep continuing to do it uh, until I get tired of it. So I've got, you know, probably a good 20 more years doing software. But. That's sort of why I ask, because I know a lot of people say, hey, they want to retire at 55 or 65 or whatever age. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm getting up there. I'm, I can't believe it, but I'm 57. But I actually love my work and I could never picture not working um, because I don't know, I don't have any hobbies. So other than talking to Todd once in a while, I don't do anything. You know, I watch reality TV a little bit. Uh, but uh, I love it. So I was just curious. So it seems like you do. You just want the independence. Is that, am I reading into it correctly? Yeah, I think that's safe to say. Um, the other thing too is so software is constantly changing. And so it's, it can be tiring to kind of keep up with it. And so at some point, I probably will just get tired of keeping up with all the changes. So it would also be nice to be location independent and be able to travel where I want when I want. So got it. So, okay, so it was pitched to you. Let's get back to this. So this, this platform, I'll call it a crowdfunding platform, was pitched to you. Sure. And tell us what you do as an investor to invest in it. Yeah, so what you do is um, it kind of really matches um, borrowers and investors. And so they're more or less the middleman. And so if you need to get a loan to or um, consolidate getting high credit card rate, a vacation or pay for a wedding or something like that, you can go onto this platform and you can get a loan uh, and the interest rate will be based on your credit, uh, credit, I imagine some other data too, like Lloyd, how much you make. Uh, and on the flip side too, if you're an investor, you can fund these loans. And, you know, I think at the time when I was doing it, you could diversify to be as little as $25 per loan. Um, and once the loan is fully funded, the money gets dispersed and um, the crowdfunding platform just kind of acts as the servicer, the intermediary, and um, they handle all the paperwork and just kind of uh, disperse your returns to you as they come in. So do you have to, do you go on and like pick and choose and underwrite, you know, the, the loans? Yeah, you can. Um, they give you certain filters so you can see if PPREPSI or um, I guess what their credit score is. Um, and you can also kind of set up a safe search so that it automatically invests on your behalf too, which is initially um, they didn't have have that but when they added it just because you'd have to keep you know every time you get money in you can reinvest it and so since I was reinvesting it I would pretty much have to go on every single day and just kind of reinvest it manually so that's a take over um, so this is and, and it was all in personal unsecured lending correct yeah so a lot of credit card debt a lot of medical bills uh, stuff like that so when I, as a little background, when I first started in business in 1989, I opened my company, they used to have, and I don't know if you guys are old enough to remember, but almost on every street corner, they would have consumer discount companies where people could go in and borrow a thousand bucks or 2000 or $5,000, whatever the state maximum is, but they've been gone a lot of government regulation. So now people are doing it online. So it seems like this is what that is. And how, how long, I apologize, we're having some delay. My oh, no worries. I, don't want to, I don't want to mention my internet carrier, but they're one of the most hated companies in America because their service stinks. I think all the services stink. But uh, how long did you do this experiment for? Was it like 24 months, 36 months, whatever? What was the amount of time you did it? Yes, yeah, so you have two options when you do the investments. Um, you can lock your money up for, I think it was uh, 36 months or 64 months and... Um, with 64 month rate of return. Um, so at some point when you really started taking off, all the shorter term loans would get snatched up really. Um, and so you kind of got forced into the longer term loans. But I did it between 2013. Um, I stopped reinvesting the money. I stopped investing new money in 2016. So as money has been coming in and loans are getting cashed out, I just pull my money out and invest into other projects. So you did it about three years? Yeah. And how much time do you, and, and the end result was, uh, how much did you put in and how much, you, I think you said it was about a 5% rate of return? Yeah, so I put in, I think it was like just a little above 17,000. Um, and so the total return was about 5%. And so if you annualize that, it's, it actually comes down to be much, much lower. Um, I got it. The, 
that's kind of where they get you is they say, you know, you can make up to 20% and then each year they revise their um, forecast. And so it goes down and down and down. And then once you annualize it, it gotcha. goes so it down sounds, further. So it sounds like you made a point, a percent and a half to 2% a year. I'll Something. call it equivalent to money market rates. Yeah. Give or take. And there was approximately what percent total loss did you have? Um, you know, no loss. No, not on your investments at all, unless you, um, you know, annual inflation. Oh, I see. Um, I don't have that nugget up uh, and get back to you on that. Okay, just curious. I will say it had uh, ranked um, in terms of safety from, they called it grade A to grade G. And so I was primarily investing in A through E, I believe. And I found there was no difference between the charge off rates between A and E. So it was kind of just uh, a total guess on their part is what it seemed like. Got yeah. it. Um, how much time do you think you devoted to this on a daily, weekly, monthly, annually basis? I'm trying to get sort of like the investment that you made, not dollars. I have a feeling the investment in your time was a lot more than the dollars, it sounds like. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think I spent too, too much on it. Um, you know, maybe 30 minutes a week tops, um, just because there's a certain number of loans um, you can filter by your criteria and so it would just more or less be you know I'm gonna select all these loans I'm gonna invest or I'm not going to so there's not too much due diligence you could do other than you know understanding what they wanted to use the loan for knowing what their credit score was and um, you know a, a few other facts and figures that they provided but there wasn't a whole lot there were no credit uh, reports there was no um, you know employment info something like or anything like that did they do that? Did they screen them or? I believe so, yeah. Mm -hmm. But gotcha. for the most part, it's just kind of a black box where they provide this product and you know you can invest or not. So you're throwing darts effectively. Pretty much. And so the other thing too, so you touched on it, that this is all unsecured debt. So if they didn't actually end up paying for the loan, there's not much you can do. There's nothing to take back. And so this company would try to do loss mitigation. And so either they would get some percentage of money back or they wouldn't. And in my experience, out of 10, they didn't, so. Right, there's probably a lot of declarations of bankruptcy involved with people who yeah. want to wipe this off the record or whatever it is. And I can remember a lot of these are smaller loans. So I don't know if the average loan was, sounds like a thousand bucks or something. So how much legal dollars can you spend to enforce that? That's sort of the reality of it, I think. Right. Yeah, exactly. And I think too, if you're gonna go in the business of purchasing um, you know, unsecured debt, you as the investor really wanna make sure you get it at a deep discount. And uh, the impression that I have now looking back is that these investments were probably so. This company was, um, it, it's kind of a brilliant model from their perspective. They assume really no risk um, and they're probably purchasing this debt at a discount and then offering it at par to other investors. Got it. There's Do you know how the, out of You curiosity, don't really have any insight. I, I don't want to really bash the company. I don't know anything about sure. them. I don't even care for username. But do you know how they're doing financially? Um, you know, I mean, they went public. Uh, I know they also had a couple snafus, too, with um, the SEC. But they're still around. They're still doing well, it seems. Um, I walk by their building every morning on my way to work. So um, it's kind of a nice reminder that there's out there in the, this stretch of nine ten and years just like in every has been very good for their business model with the economy being strong and most people having jobs um i can imagine if the economy turns like like even in our business real estate uh, you know things could actually take a turn for the worse in that business model very quickly so yeah i'm sure you're right yeah. I think what's interesting about this business model, what I call the crowdfunding, whether it be debt or equity, when it came about, every, there was so much excitement and so much money, probably billions or, you know, God knows how much money went into it on the equity of the company's side and the investors. And it really was nothing more than people were doing, companies like my company have been doing for forever, either uh, lending money or buying real estate. But this, the, the only difference that these companies put on the new spin on it was it was all through the internet. So it was just a marketing tool for what I call an old consumer discount company. You know, marketing from the borrower's end and from the investor's end. 
So what lessons did you learn for this and would you give to other investors? Yeah, I mean, I think the lessons learned from this experiment um, were actually, for me, it was totally worth the money because um, the first thing was that I had never really been exposed to the idea of having a portfolio of diversified loans. I'm more or less acting as the lender. Um, like I mentioned before, since it's unsecured debt, um, there's nothing to take back in case of default. Uh, and since this experiment, I've begun investing real estate notes, uh, mortgage notes that are backed by residential properties. And so it's conceptually similar. Um, it's a bit of a higher price point, but you know, as long as you do your due diligence uh, and the borrowers, they default or they're running behind on payments or something like that. As the lender, you're in control, you can modify loans. Uh, and if push comes to shove and you absolutely have to, there's collateral for you to take back. Uh, so I think that was probably the biggest uh, takeaway for me for this experiment. So you're, you're, you're buying like, uh, are you buying discounted paper or seller take backs? Um, so I, I purchased non-performing mortgages uh, and I also purchased performing mortgages too. Um, they just, you know, whichever I can get my hands on at the time. Uh, but I prefer to invest in uh, the Midwest have been pretty good to me so far. I've closed a handful of deals and um, you know, I'm getting much better returns than I was online. So I'm right. happy to keep doing it and uh, beginning to start raising capital. So. Are you and what's, what's, what's your due diligence process? If you don't mind my asking, like how, how do you evaluate these deals? Yeah. So, I mean, you're really trying to figure out what the true value of the asset is. Um, so you plan for, and so I prefer um, first position mortgages. So, the property value is really, really important to me. Um, the borrower's you know, credit score and all that stuff is more important for seconds is my understanding. But as long as I can really nail the property value for that worst case scenario in the event that it has to be taken back, um, that's gonna be great for me. And so you, know, you wanna look at things like, uh, what is the area like? What's the rental rate in that area? Um, and you always wanna make sure you have eyes on the property. So teaming up with realtors uh, to go make sure that it's actually still standing. And, um, you, you know, just making sure that the mortgages and everything else is, um, it's, uh, it's been done correctly. So working with attorneys to really make sure that the eyes are dotted in the test. So. Steve, how long have you been buying the, the real estate notes, uh, on your own? A little bit over a year. So still very early days, but, um, I, I really like the model. I really like, um, you know, the whole analyzing of the deal. I think that comes from my engine background, so I'm no stranger to spreadsheets. But um, yeah, I, like I said, my uh, the next chapter is raising capital, and so I love talking with potential partners and uh, just kind of exposing people to note investing because it's funny that you know it's been around for years and years, but it's still a seemingly niche uh, investment vehicle in terms of real estate. So whenever I talk to people at real estate meetups, they they have no idea what I'm talking about. So it's always a good time for a good conversation. Got it. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And, and, and first, before I forget, why don't you give out your contact information? And if people want to contact you or go to your website, um, they're welcome to, obviously. Yeah, sure thing. Um, best probably on LinkedIn. I'm on there a lot. Um, so my name is Steve Lindstrom. Last name is spelled L-I-N-D-S-T-R-O-M. And my company is Morning Light Capital. Uh, and the reason for that is that I tend to do all my real estate work. <laughs> Morning is where I uh, kind of do all this stuff. So morning. What time do you get up in the morning? What time do you get up? It's a constant battle. It used to be 5 a.m., but it's kind of uh, been sliding. I think it's 30. So I'm trying to get back to 5 a.m. You, you wake up on your own at that time? I try to. The cell phone uh, goes off a bunch, but uh, it depends on, on uh, you know, what time I I got it. So, uh, you know, my, my company has been buying private notes, among other things, for literally 30 years. Um, so I have a lot of experience in it. So I'm going to be curious uh, to talk to you in two or three years when you've gone through the cycle, uh, because that's really when you know uh, everything looks good when you go into it. I always joke around. I said, everyone walks down the aisle thinking their marriage is going to be a success, but yet 50% yeah. of them don't. So I'm going to be curious to talk to you in a couple of years. What other underwriting, I know you said you're focused on the property. Like what, do you have any specific underwriting criteria or a box that it has to meet uh, to, to get your attention? 
Yeah, I mean, I'm looking for certain returns um, and it's going to vary based on if it's performing or not performing and uh, how much equity is in the property as well. Um, it also, I'm going to look for a bigger discount too if, um, you know, all the paperwork isn't 100% of the, you know, if there's a, a cloud and title or something like that that I have to fix, I'm probably going to back that out. Um, but, you know, as long as going forward, I can calculate all my attorney fees and servicing fees and um, all the due diligence costs. Um, it all just kind of factors into the bid amount and you their a counter offer or an acceptance and uh, hope for the best. And so, what do you do if you find a deal that's sort of outside of your sort of target target price point that might be like twice as much, let's just say, do you, do you have partners or others that you can tap into at this point to help you on a deal like that if it's like a must? Buy kind of yeah, thing. definitely. I um, so I learned about note investing. There's a gentleman in Austin, Texas, named Scott Carson, and so I took his training, and he's been a, a terrific mentor. Uh, and he has kind of introduced me to a terrific network of other individual note investors. So if I come across uh, you know a spreadsheet of ten million dollars of something that I don't, I'm not able to purchase the whole thing, I can always talk with these folks, and someone else is going to have deals lined up that they they want to do. So yeah, it, your network is everything in real estate investing is what I'm learning. So. Glad to be adding you guys to my network too, um, and looking forward to working. With do you have any in the future? Do you have any particular guidelines? Like, you'll you, will you buy rural or like guidelines on the property? Like, some people don't like rural, or some people sure. don't like above a certain amount or below a certain amount, or you know, there's a million things. I'm just curious if you're comfortable. If you don't want to give it away, I don't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> No, no worries. Uh, yeah, I, I try to stay away from the rural stuff for now. Um, I, I can see how you can make money on it, but I think for you know, you know for my purposes, just getting to stick with uh, metros that have at least ten thousand people in them. In the event that I have to take back the property and uh, resell it, I need there to be people to actually purchase it. Um, and the other things that I'm looking forward to is for price point, I'm looking for around uh, a current as-is value of between like fifty thousand and one hundred twenty-five thousand. It's just where I've kind of seen the deals at. Um, a lot of my criteria has been dictated on what's available to me. And so those two things are really helpful. Got it. You're a technology guy. Technology platform guys for your underwriting and, and for this investing process. So for me right now, I'm just all on spreadsheets. Um, I don't want to optimize too early, um, have more, more data to determine what I actually need. Um, cause I know myself personally, if I start just going down that rabbit hole, it's, it's time I should be spending trying to find deals or market deals or, you know, um, find new investors. So right now all spreadsheets, but, um, you know, using different vendors to outsource things like, um, BPOs and, um, title reports and stuff like that. Rent really good too for determining, uh, current rent values. Got it. Um, how do you find the deals out of curiosity? Mostly are. Um, I've been posting stuff on LinkedIn consistently and other note investors reach out to me with notes that they're trying to move. Um, I've had a couple of calls with uh, funds that are, you know, they've said that I'm too small now, but they want to start the conversation so that in two, three years when I'm bigger, maybe we can do um, business together. So I think it's really just about relationships, letting people know what you're doing. So, um, and just act to be honest. So it, to sum it up, it seems like this journey you've taken, if I'll call it that, it really, the main lesson is it's all about the collateral. That the individual's credit or the individual, I don't want to say it doesn't factor into it that much, but really uh, it's, it's heavily weighted to the, coll the collateral. Is that a kind of what you're thinking or a fair statement? A statement to make. Yeah, I think it's fair. Um, I also think note investors too serve a, a good purpose too, because there's a lot of people out there that, you know, for lower priced houses, the bigger banks don't want to touch small loans. Um, it's the same amount of paperwork for them to do, you know, $50,000 loan, $50,000 loan as it would be to do a $250,000 loan. So they're not going to waste their time with the smaller loan. Uh, and so I think note investors uh, offering seller financing for houses as well, it kind of unlocks a new territory for people that, can actually afford the payments. Um, they might not meet the underwriting principles. Um, everyone needs a place to live. And so uh, either you're gonna be paying for a mortgage, you're gonna be paying for rent. So 
you're able to offer people a place to live. Um, and since they own a home, they're more pride of ownership and keep the area a bit nicer too. So yeah, but you're, you're right. When I'm purchasing notes that are already, um, yeah, it's mostly the collateral that I'm looking at. Have you had an experience to take a, take a property back? I've come close. Um, so there's actually one in Missouri that we're finishing up now and it looks like we're going to be modifying it to keep them in the home. So, uh, um, not yet, but I'm sure in the future at some point I probably will have to. I've lived through it like a ton of times, so you'll survive, I promise. <laughs> Maybe lose a little sleep. You see, I lost plenty of hair doing it, but uh, it's all part of the game. I'm, I'm working on it. I, I got it. I, <laughs> I, I got it. I, I, I got it. Um, so, got it. So it sounds like you're out there marketing for it. Uh, will you also do simultaneous closes? Um, I'm, I'm not opposed to it. I haven't had to yet, but um, yeah, I would, I'm happy to keep all my options open. Got it. Very interesting. Very interesting. Well, look, I, I appreciate you uh, sharing your, uh, your, your story on, on LinkedIn. As I said, I've been in this field for 30 years and we've been very focused, um, especially on the crowdfunding part of it. Um, and it was interesting to read yours and so many others like you. You know, I don't know about you, but I run into people all the time and everyone seems to be doing great. It's like gamblers. You, you know, you never talk to anyone who walks out of the casino. Oh, I just lost my shirt or I did lousy today. Yeah. And it's the same thing with real estate investing and note investing. Very few people tell you the real, um, what really goes on. And what really goes on sometimes is not so glamorous. And there's, there are losses out there, whether you're investing in debt or equity and people should be very, very careful of it. I've experienced it over the past 30 years many times, but I, I applaud you for um, coming forth. And I think more people need to come forth and say that. Anything we missed that, that you want to um, bring out for, the, uh, for anyone listening or watching? Um, I think we got pretty much everything. Um, if you're ever in San Francisco, reach out. I'd love to show you around. Um, and I hope to connect with more people on LinkedIn. So. Uh, you know, they can keep following along with my journey uh, into note investing and hopefully everything continues going well. Uh, so if someone Great, wants thank to, you so much for being uh, Our pleasure. If someone wants to invest with you, are they investing in an individual note or a fund? Uh, currently I'm doing, I'm working with joint venture partners. Um, so still too small for a fund, but uh, in the future, absolutely. Very interesting, very interesting. Todd, any final, any thoughts on this? No, it was great. I, why don't we ask some, a couple personal questions or things we do outside of work, anything that you, uh, that you do sort of unwind, any movies you love, TV shows? Yeah, I mean, um, so exploring San Francisco is always fun. I've been here since 2012, so it's, it's actually been kind of a, a while. Um, aside from that, though, I like to travel. I've uh, been to France a bunch of times. Um, hope to explore Europe a bit. Um, I played drums for 10 years, but it's kind of hard in an apartment here. So that's kind of on hiatus for a while, but yeah. Awesome. I have a question. Uh, you know, I, I, I hate to talk about it, but sure. how is San Francisco doing right now? You know, you, you read on the news and a lot of it's political based. So I don't mean yeah. to, I don't want to, I'm not taking sides one way or the other, but how's the city doing um, right now? Obviously the tech field is doing fantastic. But I'm talking about the sure. average Joe living, you know, in San Francisco. How's the city doing? Yeah, it's, it's, um, so, I mean, I've been here since 2012, like I said, and it's actually changed quite a bit since then. Um, you know, the city has its fair share of problems that are well publicized. Um, I'm glad I'm not the person that's trying to figure them out because they're really complicated problems. Um, but, you know, infrastructure is getting better. Um, Unfortunately, it seems like there's a, a bit of an uptick in homelessness. Um, so hopefully sure. the city's able to figure that out. But uh, in terms of livability, you know, everything keeps going up in price. And so teachers and policemen and all the essential people that make the city a better place get priced out. So I'm not sure if it's going to continue going up. Uh, but, you know, if you're in the tech field, it's, it's pretty good. But um, it is a beautiful city. Absolutely magnificent. And yeah, it's probably, you know, the cost of living there is, I think it's higher than New York now from everything I understand. So oh, wow. it's crazy. Uh, yeah. yeah. 
Okay, well, we got a little bit on San Francisco. I'm not going to dive into it anymore because I, I try to stay away from politics. Or sure. I, I really enjoyed diving into politics, but uh, this isn't the, this is the <laughs> time for it. I don't want to alienate too many people. I alienate enough. Um, sure. Ty, any other thoughts, my friend? We know he plays the drums. Let me ask you a question. Are you a single guy? Uh, no, girlfriend. Girlfriend of four years. So. Okay, so we can't. We've made many matches on this. So yeah. We can't make a match. Well, <laughs> not. Tell your girlfriend hello. We're looking forward to seeing her one day, meeting her. No matches, Todd. Sure thing. Well, it was great having you, Steve. Thanks so much for everything. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Steve, I really appreciate it. You're welcome on anytime. I'm serious. I'd love to have you on um, in a year to talk about your experiences on the note buying, because that's that's my field. And anytime you want a larger partner. Uh, give me a call. We also, by the way, um, a little selfish plug here, we'll lend money to note buyers. So not only will we buy the note, but we'll finance guys like you or, or gals. You've got to be very careful today. We'll finance investors um, who are buying the notes. So um, with that, I appreciate everyone's Todd. Todd, good seeing you. Hello to Todd's daughter uh, sneaking in the left-hand <laughs> side of the screen. Uh, everyone else, check us out on jackmiller.com. YouTube, uh, this will be up on H. Jack Miller. It'll be on podcast and uh, SoundCloud and Podbeam and iTunes and 50 other sites. Just go for it and leave your comments. And don't forget to like it and click the bell or the buzzer. I always forget what it is. You'll get notified of more. Everyone have a great day. Thank you very much. Take care. Good night. It's Down to Business with Jack Miller. Forget what they teach you in school. This is real life. Not Wall Street, but Main Street. He and his guests will answer your questions and provide you with valuable information. Stay tuned and join in the conversation. Follow them on Facebook at Jack Miller Down to Business or on Twitter at HJackMiller1.